Sony just unleashed this magnificent beast called Alpha One. Alpha One is a 50.1 megapixel flagship full frame camera that sits on top of other Alpha full frame cameras. This thing can shoot 8K 30 frames per second, 400 megabits per second, 10 bit 420 video, 30 frames per second burst photo with 120 calculations per second for auto exposure and auto focus with no blackout. It has the electronic viewfinder that we know and love from Sony A7S III with a refresh rate up to 240 frames per second. So looking through the electronic viewfinder of this device is like looking through life. So I guess the question is, is this $6,500 beast any good? By the way, don't forget to hit subscribe and play Ding Dong Ditch with the bell next to it so you don't miss any of my upcoming videos. Thank you. And here it is. Sony Alpha 1 comes in this nicely designed box. Inside the box we're greeted with some papers, a cable holder, USB-C to USB-A cable, charger, strap, Z battery and Alpha 1 itself. Another camera video and we're in Venice again. I love, I love coming here for the camera reviews. A1 can be the least leaked camera ever until the announcement on January 26th. I had no idea this camera was coming. And as a person who doesn't like leaks a lot, this was such a pleasant surprise. And I mentioned before, this camera is not here to replace any other alpha cameras like A9 Mark II. This camera is in its own category, which is on top of <laughs> all the other Alpha cameras. This camera is for super serious professionals that barely smile, like, like myself. I am rarely, I barely smile, I never smile. Now, let's begin with design. A1 is 737 grams, which is 51 grams heavier than A9 Mark II. The grip is perfect. The camera just sits in your hand. You don't need to squeeze it. It just stays there. These little things for the strap don't dangle, which is great for audio. As you can imagine, the buttons are sturdy and nice. We have the five-way joystick here. Record button is back here again. Just like A7S III, it has two memory card slots and it accepts CF Express Type A and UHS-1 and two SD memory cards. And on the top left here, we have a dial to adjust focus and drive modes. It has HDMI type A, mic jack, headphone jack, USB-C 3.2 with power delivery support, micro USB, flash sync terminal, and gigabit internet connections. I actually like these doors 
a lot because for my use it works great i don't need most of these doors but i usually use the power delivery and hdmi output so now i only have to open one door to connect my camera to my tv and power just like a7s3 the screen supports touch you can scroll through the menu when you go to fo your photos you can pinch to zoom and the screen doesn't black out with polarized sunglasses now this may make you happy or probably sad but this camera doesn't have a flip out screen it has a tilt screen i know a lot of people prefer flip out screen and it's great when you're vlogging but in some cases the tilt screen works better in very rare cases for example my overhead camera here with a tilt screen it's much easier to see what's going on also it's a lot easier to maintain on a gimbal and on a slider while I'm shooting beauty shots. In the end, it's all up to the way you use the camera. As I mentioned before, this camera can shoot up to 8K 30 frames per second, 400 megabits per second, 10 bit 420 videos. And Sony says, it can record up to 30 minutes before overheating. Well, that's not what I found out when I did my own tests and I'm sorry, Sony, but you know, I can't let this pass. According to my tests in my room, which was 76 degrees Fahrenheit, this camera was able to record up to one hour and 30 minutes. <laughs> before overheating and shutting down. Of course, the camera was set to auto shut down at high temperature, but that's the result I got. This goes to show that the heat dissipation of this camera is really good. Also, cool down times are really good as well. After waiting a little bit, you can start recording again. And while I was doing the test, I used the relay mode for the memory cards and the first memory card was CF Express Type A and the second one was a V90 memory card from Prograde and it quietly passed to the second memory card and kept on recording and the videos were one piece in each memory card, of course. 8K is oversampled from 8.6K which means it reads the full frame. So while you're shooting in 24 or 30 frames per second in 8K, there is no crop. It also records in H.265. And if you like, alongside with 8K, you can record proxies. So when it's time to edit your video, you can put them together and use proxies to edit your video. However, there is no APS-C crop or active stabilization in 8K, but worry not. Sony's life-changing software called Catalyst Browse can fix that because this camera records gyro data. And if you don't know what gyro data is, it is basically every movement that happens to this camera gets recorded via accelerometers and gyroscope. So when you bring this footage into Catalyst Browse, Catalyst Browse can look at the footage and the shake information and fix it for you with the amount of crop and stabilization you like. However, it cannot export in 8K yet, but the software isn't updated. So hopefully when it gets updated, it will be able to export in 8K as well. When it comes to other resolutions like 1080p and 4K, it's pretty much exactly the same as A7S3. We have the XAVC HS, XAVC S, and XAVC SI modes. In 1080p and 4K, it shoots up to 120 frames per second with audio, 10 bit 422 video in H.264, H.265, in long GOP or all intra. And if you don't know what these mean, I explain all of that in my A7S III video. You can go and check that one out. Alpha One supports active stabilization up to 4K 60 frames per second and compared to standard stabilization, it makes a big difference with only 12.5% crop. Just like A7S III in SNQ mode, you can either set your camera to shoot a time-lapse or a slow motion video. And if you have a CF Express Type A or a V90 SD card, 
you can shoot up to 1080p 240 frames per second. But bear in mind, in SNQ mode, this camera, just like A7S3, doesn't record audio. And if you're using an external recorder like the Atomos Ninja 5 I have here, you can record up to 4.2K, actually 4.3K, 60 frames per second, raw 16-bit footage. One thing I really miss on my A7S3 is the APS-C crop and A1 gives you the option to do the APS-C crop because it has enough pixels. What APS-C crop means is your camera sensor can gather so much information that it can just read a smaller part of the sensor and give you the same quality with a zoomed in image. For example, for 4K video, we need only 8.5 megapixels. So what this camera can do with its 50.1 megapixel is use less of its photo sites, crop into the footage and give you same quality video. This is a great trick to get a second focal length from one lens. But A1 doesn't just crop into 8.5 megapixels and give you 4K footage. It oversamples 4K footage from 5.8K, which is like a 33% crop and 41.1% crop if you're using active stabilization. This thing comes in very handy in my situation while I'm doing beauty shots, while I'm using a gimbal and I balanced my camera on top of a slider or, or a Ronin and I don't wanna change anything but I need a second focal length. Let's test it right now. This is full frame and now let's switch to APS-C crop. And this is APS-C crop. When it comes to autofocus, it has human, animal, and bird selection. Human works in photos and stills, animal and bird works in stills. And as you can imagine, this has no problem keeping you in focus. And when you turn the tracking on, the tracking sticks to you like a glue and it keeps on tracking you in a really nice way. Also, while the HDMI is connected, in every mode, the eye and face detection stays on. It doesn't get turned off like the previous all older models. Also screen can be set to sunny weather mode in every setting as well, including 8K. Just like A7S3, we have the autofocus transition speed and autofocus subject shift sensitivity. When it comes to picture profiles, we have the usual suspects, but on top of that, now we have a new mode called a Cinetone. And the minimum ISO on this one is 125. In S-Log2 and S-Log3, minimum ISO is 800, and the switch happens at 4000 ISO. Another fantastic feature is the anti-flicker setting we have here. It works in photo and video. It basically gives you shutter speeds between the regular shutter speeds. So if you have something flickering in the background, you can go and adjust your shutter speed accordingly and get rid of that scanning lines happens probably mostly because of the LED lights. Before we talk about photos, I like to talk about the new mechanical shutter and the sound it makes. Just delicious. And that's electronic shutter, by the way. That's 30 frames per second. Welcome back! As I mentioned before, this thing can shoot 30 frames per second with auto exposure and auto focus in burst mode. And if you're using a CF Express Type A or a V90 memory card, it writes these <laughs> gigantic images on those memory cards super fast as well. And if you like to use pixel shift, you can create a photo up to 200 megapixels. It also has lossless compressed RAW. Now, I brought my 135 millimeter lens here. Let's see what we can get. Now let's set the face eye detection to bird and see if we can capture some bird's eyes. You see the first victim here? There it is, there it is. Let's go find some other birds.
In the end, Sony Alpha 1 is Sony's best full-frame Alpha series camera yet. It exceeds the expectations in photo and video mode. It has a great battery life, 8K video is fantastic, and 30 frames per second photo burst mode is a game changer. I thought nothing can take the place of A7S 3 in my heart, but Sony Alpha 1 did.